Welcome everyone to Best Ball Night School. You got Coach Retzlaff here with Ed DeLauder, the FF litigator. So we'll get started tonight. Where do you want Mike Evans to land? Right now, 32.6 ADP. He's at the bottom of the third round in our underdog drafts. There's been like so much hype about Evans going to the Chiefs, at Chiefs ever since there's been news that like Tampa Bay is not going to franchise him. I think it's just too cost prohibitive for the, for them. I think he might be too cost prohibitive for the Chiefs too. I, I there are a couple teams where I'm trying to maybe stack him Mahomes just on a puncher's chance that that happens, but I think that if he does go somewhere, it might be some place that's a lot uglier than most people think it's going to be. I was looking at just projected cap space today and you see the Titans are up there. I think Hopkins is no longer there. I think. I, I don't know. I got to double check that. But certainly they could use somebody like Mike Evans. Um, you know, as a as a New Yorker, a Giant fan, the Giants have a need at X receiver. Would that be great for fantasy? No. So that could happen. There's a lot of uglier landing spots than I think better ideal landing spots. But, you know, maybe he'll go. We'll see. But. It'd be nice to to see him on the Chiefs, but so I'm with you. I like that. I prefer for Evans to leave Tampa Bay. Uh, I like to pair Evans and Godwin on the same best ball teams, and then I think I can split off two wide receiver ones in the event that Mike Evans signs with another team. Now, what I think Mike Evans has to do here is he's got legacy. He's earned this. He's in a spot where he's won a Super Bowl with the goat with Tom Brady. You take the opportunity, like you said, with the Chiefs. What would be better than getting an endorsement from Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes and then winning a ring? Let's say it's the two next two years, and he ends up with two rings. He's got legacy that he can think about. He's got a second town. He can go and eat for free the rest of his life. Now take it to the Buffalo Bills. You break the curse of the Buffalo Bills. Think of every Red Sox player. I'm a Yankees fan, but go every Red Sox player player from 2004 they wake up every day they're so happy with the success they had winning in boston because they've been 86 years look at the bills i think that would just be an excellent again legacy move for mike evans the cincinnati Bengals would be another team depending on what happens with t higgins there would be another team they haven't won a super bowl they still need to get over the top they're long suffering as well so i think mike evans has part of that that money and the legacy that he can weigh you mentioned the Tennessee Titans, the Giants. We we're just mad. We we're like, oh, okay, are you just going to chase the bag at that point? I look at the Houston Texans as well. That could be a place where he could chase the bag and probably get the team in that next gear because you have C.J. Stroud, Waddell, Nico. They need another guy. They've elevated. They need to go over the top. So I would like Mike Evans, though, for best ball teams to leave Tampa Bay because we could split that off. Now, what are you doing with the Trey Palmers, Rashad Whites, Kate Ottens? What are you doing with the rest of the Buccaneers here? Man, I think outside of Godwin, I really haven't been drafting too many of those other guys. You know, Rashad White, if you look at a lot of his stats last year, it's just all volume. And the one thing that I want to do is just when it comes to a running back like him is just fade that volume year over year. There's no real draft capital insulation for him. I think that there could be another back that gets added there. A part of me thought that that was Sean Tucker last year, but it didn't happen. It didn't turn out that way, I should say. But I, I think that there's a there's a carpet getting pulled out from him type of scenario that I don't think his current ADP sort of, you know, visualizes. The other guys, Auden, Palmer, I don't think I have too much of them on any of my teams right now. Uh, I do like them as just like speculative late round, dart, late round dart throws. The problem with these bucks is that it's hard to figure out a stacking option with them at this point. I think Baker probably goes back there, but there's no sure thing there. And that's the issue with that. But Godwin, I think, is a real value here. Um, if you look at just like from a target standpoint, he wasn't too far off from Evans last year. Evans had just an insanely, uh, insane, more basically 
a, a boatload more touchdowns, right? I don't know if insanely is a word, but we'll we'll go with it. So, I mean, you know, and, and if there's one thing that you want to do every year, it's just fade that or bank on touchdown regression, right? So Godwin really didn't have many last year. That might come up this year, even if Evan stays. So I think that Godwin is really the best value of this Tampa Bay group here. And I'd probably want him more so than everybody else, for sure. And Chris Godwin going, this is tracking from Monday. It might have parsed a few spots between Monday's ADP and today. Chris Godwin going 72.2 on underdog ADP. I really like your call there. We've baked in all the touchdowns for Mike Evans. We like Mike Evans at ADP because of all the scenarios we laid out before. With Chris Godwin, we know that there's a little bit of value there, like you said. And going back to Rashad White, everything's been baked in to where he's at 40.6 on underdog ADP. The value last year, he was back towards a seventh round pick. It was like you could set your team up and then just drop him in there. I would say for Baker Mayfield, I'm not stressing trying to cap him on top of my Tampa Bay Buccaneers builds. Really what I'm doing is that Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, I get them on the same team. And then in the event that Mike Evans goes to another team, they're both going to separate and go up. There's that upside. You're landing a wide receiver one on two teams. It's like a, a, a little cheat code. I know Theo Greminger talks about Blackjack split backfields like Derrick Henry, Ty J Spears. You get them separated. Then you have two RB1s in the event that Derrick Henry goes to another team and then matriculating up is Ty J Spears. So I see that for Mike Evans and for Chris Godwin. So I think that's a very valuable opportunity. Trey Palmer, I think there'll be a spike for him post Mike Evans going to another team. And I think in Dynasty, you'll have a selling opportunity. But where we're at in underdog best ball drafts, I think he's just worth it at that price, 186 overall ADP. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense for sure. The, particularly the, the splitting the, the blackjack theory there for sure. I dig it for sure. All right, so we will share. We'll go over our first draft. And let's just talk about this team. We have a bunch of slow drafts. We have all day. We got all night. We have until August, till the beginning of September. These are slow drafts. It's night school. You go to night school, you might need a little more time to catch up on things. So we're going to take all the time we need right here. I got a team cooking. I believe this is a big board team. Let's take a look slowly as I scroll. I've got A. Rich at quarterback. Tyler Murray, Jaden Daniels. All right, three Konami code quarterbacks. It's a 3 4 7 2 build. Let me tell you what my tight ends are. I have Mark Andrews and Michael Mayer. My bullish outlook as far as a stack would be Jaden Daniels. If he goes to the Raiders, I have him and Michael Mayer. Michael Mayer would boost, his dynasty stock would boost. I see Michael Mayer as somebody to buy in dynasty. But we are focusing here on that best ball. My wide receiver build, I went crazy with Justin Jefferson. Love him at four. We'll talk about him a little bit later. If he's sliding past 102, I'm scooping him up where I can. We love Chris Olave. I stack Michael Pittman with A. Rich. And we have Chris Godwin, who we just talked about. He's going to have an opportunity, hopefully, to spike up after Mike Evans. Hopefully, he leaves town. Not feeling so hot on Jahan Dotson. But we'll see what happens. There could be a, a quarterback improvement. Maybe it's Drake May. There's more to be had there. Michael Wilson, I'm stacking with Kyler Murray. He's a cheap, affordable guy to get in the event that Marquise Brown is out. Maybe it's Marvin Harrison Jr. or Malik Neighbors. We have Wilson tied. I think he's just an easy guy to get. Roman Wilson, the darling of the uh, Senior Bowl. And I've got a very thin. So this is where I need a little advice. Very thin on my running back room. It's fragile. Derrick Henry, Javante Williams, rookie Ray Davis, and Antonio Gibson. It's looking very bleak. So at the top, I have Jalen Carter in my queue. What do you think of me? Or sorry, Jalen Wright, not Jalen Carter. I mixed him up with Michael Carter. 
What do you think of Jalen Wright as my fifth running back in this build? I do like it. You have some floor with Henry, and I think arguably upside there. There's been talk of him going to the Ravens. I think he would smash there. And I think his ADP, I don't think it skyrockets, but you're probably talking about a guy that's going in the third round as opposed to an ADP is 62 at this point if he lands there. Um, but you also have floor there with Williams. I think he could probably shoot for upside. I do Jalen right there as like a spec rookie running back that, you know, the, the NFL draft, absolute wild card. You don't know where he's going to go. Maybe he lands in a great spot and you have a guy that can give you some RB2, RB1 production that, you know, for a couple weeks that you got in the 17th round. And I, I like what you said about Derrick Henry. And uh, if my eyes don't deceive me, I have him at the 76 pick. He fell. So we love that too. When, when a player falls beyond 12 picks, you just scoop the value. There was another draft I had to Sean Watson. It was close to 30 picks. I said, I don't even have him stacked, but I'm taking him, getting the value there. Um, so I like what you said. Jalen Wright, He sat, I, I see all over Twitter. I see respectable people who are hyping him up. He reminds me of a player who will get drafted, will get signal, and then he'll score and shoot up the board a little bit more. Maybe not crazy, but a couple rounds. And right now, he's just like that little gem who I think post-NFL draft, he's going to spike. And getting him back here at 202, he's been in the 200s, and he's slowly creeping up into the 100s. I know right now, if I don't pick him, I don't get him. The state of my running back room with my 3472 build right now, as is, I'm thinking in the 17th round, I'm going to go Jalen Wright with this pick. And, and the beauty is, we have three more rounds. It's 20 rounds versus an 18 round build. So, with this 20 round build, I feel a little safer or, or better with going after three quarterbacks going after three tight ends. I feel less pressure to go eight or nine wide receivers. You can play with the numbers a little bit. I've seen some three, seven, seven, three builds. But right now with what we're cooking, I think we need another running back. But it also lays out with our team need and where we are ADP-wise. So we're going to put it on the board, as Matthew Barry used to say. Jalen Wright, we're going to draft him. Nice. All right, welcome Thanks. to the squad. Excellent. So Jeremiah, I noticed that while that receiver room is absolutely stacked, I didn't see any of the 49ers on there. And there are some, there's some noise or potentially news with Brandon Ayuk. I guess there was some stuff on, was it Instagram, Twitter? I don't know, whatever the kids are on these days, just going on about how he needs to get off the Niners and that he's not going to play for the Niners. I guess one of his family members was talking about that. Do you think that this is a real issue for Brandon Ayuk? Or is this just off-season, uh, like Debo, like Debo like a couple of years ago, right? Where I'm going to un unfollow everybody. and So news or noise? Jeremiah, what, 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 what's your take? I think it's a, a mixture of emotions of the big game and the business side of the NFL. And you had Gabe Davis just a few days ago. I think it was Denny Carter talked about how, hey, Gabe Davis is an XL champion for his stats. He's posting them all. And I think players know where things will go come negotiation time. I think what happened is Ayuk's got the burn and the hurt of the emotion of the game. But he's also thinking on the business side of what he wants, whether it's players who say, this is what's coming down the, the pipeline, whether it's the agent feeding things. Granted, should the family <clears throat> and close people be spouting off? I, I imagine Brandon Ayuk has the self-control, but for the family members, it can be very hard to see him out there, not do as well as they hope, and they care about him, right? So I think it's a mixture of that and the business side, because you can't discount in negotiations one person in the room or over the phone, anything in translation. Somebody says something sideways where it's a couple million off and certain things. Oh, yeah, you did just have those those three catches in the Super Bowl. We didn't really have an epic run like we were hoping to have. You, you just get these little digs in sometimes. 
And you just wonder if that's what that's all about. I'll say with there, is this noise or a real issue? As we're drafting right now, when you're clicking, who are you clicking and how do you feel about this situation as well? Debo at 23.7 or Ayuk 21.9. They're, they're neck and neck. Yeah, you, you obviously can't get them both on the same team, is, which is unfortunate. But if I, you know, you know, and I've had obviously had to make this decision in a couple of drafts. I, I, for me, it's a Uke every time. I think that there's just a lot more upside there. Even if a Uke leaves, Debo is still going to be, I think, in the same type of role. I feel like the, the Niners will probably replace what a Uke does. A Uke's a stud. But you're not going to re- replace Brandon a Uke. But they'll obviously have another body out there, wide receiver, soaking up some targets. I don't think that Debo goes back to, I don't know, where he was, like, what, three years ago when he was, like, I I forget, he was, like, a world beater, right? Um, You know, he's still going to be exposed to a lot of the, some touches at running back, you know, more injury downside there. Um, So, for me, it's Ayuk, even with this potential noise or news, whatever you want to classify it as. Because even if AU goes somewhere else, I, I think that if he goes really anywhere else and is featured as the the guy, the wide receiver one, uh, and he sees like 140 targets and or more, you're looking at the Stefan Diggs going to the Bills situation and you're going to want that guy on your fantasy team. So for me, it's AU every time. The only time I ever... <laughs> That, you know, I think there's one team I might have Debo on, and I think it's because Ayuk was not there. So <laughs> yes, that makes sense, and, and it's smart too. If we are pro Ayuk, when you see the opportunity fall, you go after Debo. I like what you say with him getting those carries. That that beating that you can take, that physicality, it can dip and die for a player, and the play style that Ayuk has may be more prone to him having some of that launch success. It just might be a matter of time before IU just asymmetrical, just goes way up. And then we're looking at Debo where he's banged up. He had a little shoulder thing this year where it is valuable to have Debo, the devil's advocate on the other side, because we're always trying to think, all right, what would be the, the other side of what we have going on when he's in and he's featured, he's eating. He's getting that, those low weight up. He is getting those rushes. And when he's coming up uninjured, unharmed, he's out there cooking. So we could definitely be on the wrong side of this Debo Ayuk debate. There's people who are fiery and have passion. It's like Paul and John for the Beatles. You really both have hits on both sides. I'm with you. I'm I'm very much a, an Ayuk guy myself. Who do you think makes a better stacking partner too? Like, with with Purdy, if you are going to stack him with Purdy, was is it Ayuk or Debo? Like to me, it's it's clearly Ayuk. I don't know. Maybe that maybe that maybe people feel differently. I think you're in the same boat. But have you have you like focused on a Niner stack like that or, or or anything like that? And if so, who's the who's the stacking partner there that you're looking for? I very much. We were talking about some quarterbacks, the guys who can just cap right on top. It was like Jared Goff, Kyler Murray. And Brock Purdy was one of them. And Brock Purdy is just somebody who you can just cap right at the top and you don't have to force him in. So you can just have your base, Debo, Ayuk, Kittle in there, and then you're just plucking like the George Kittle when he he does this. You're able to do that with Brock Purdy. And I like that because really what it is is you don't have pressure to stack Purdy, but it works out beautifully when he's there for you. So if I have a, a combination of, let's say, Lions, Dolphins, 49ers, I'm just so happy to sprinkle any of those quarterbacks when I'm getting baseline players on those teams. Like you said, we're going to want 49ers. We're going to want Dolphins. We definitely want Lions. It's a good spot to be in. So the beauty is I'm never intentionally going out to get Brock Purdy. But it just works out so well that you have a lot of freedom when you get to his range in drafts on underdog, where you're just, okay, cool, he's there. Oh, he got taken? All right, now I'm going to pivot to Goff. Oh, Goff got taken? I'm going to pivot to Tua. Oh, he's he's gone? There's Kyler Murray. So you have a lot of outs. It's probably the best way to put it. 
For sure. Now, did you have a draft? Or you were so up? let's. Yeah, let's go to a draft that I'm working on right now. I'm currently picking it. A very nice pick of pick 69. Um, you know, the only the only guy I got in my queue here is two. I feel like it might be. I, I don't really feel any pressure to take him at this point. Mm -hmm. I'm currently working with a skinny stack of Lamar and Mark Andrews. I've got Saquon, Tyreek Hill, and Tank Dell. So I haven't really thought about who to pick here, though. But I think our we, we we talked about this before. We see Derrick Henry falling, which he, he hasn't fallen too far, but he's fallen. Yeah, I think I might go here as like an RB two type of thing. But obviously, when when you pick running back high, Saquon not that high. I got him in the second round. I think that that's that's going to be long gone come August. But you, you start thinking about hero RB. But I wouldn't mind adding Derrick Henry here. I don't know, Jeremiah. What are your thoughts on? Uh, where to go from here? What do you think? What do you think about Derrick Henry there? Are there any other options on the board here conceptually, that tickle your fancy? <laughs> conceptually, I love just this huge gap. And like the, the bigger the gap, the scarier, the more I want to lean into that. Uh, Saquon Barkley, you, you got, said you got him at the 21st pick. At this point, I think you could press a button on Derrick Henry. I love this range of the draft. I've been always able to get D David Montgomery. So it's, it's interesting to see, like you said, if Derrick Henry is falling in these drafts to the David Montgomery tier, give me the, the, the Derrick Henry. Especially when we rumor, like you had said earlier, the Baltimore Ravens, we're cooking with possibility of 20 touchdowns. When we were looking at J.K. Dobbins, and now you have Derrick Henry, I know he's at that age cliff. With Lamar Jackson being able to freeze linebackers, and if he does go to Baltimore, you might be smart right now to take Derrick Henry on a speculative where you take him, you've got Lamar, him, and Mark Andrews. Rashad Bateman is going, I think, 200. He, he's going late. So you could really, and if you tack on a rookie here or there, I know we've already missed Zay Flowers. But I think you have a sneaky back door, and it'll flip over once we have free agency. You don't know it. All right, right now, it's just a ticket. If you go with Derrick Henry here, you're getting some of that Ravens build preemptively without the market necessarily knowing. If he signs with the Ravens tomorrow, or we get the alert, alert you know, whatever the free agency start date is, right, he will jump up boards, especially if it's with the Ravens. So right here, I think it's worth – taking a shot at Derrick Henry to pair with the Ravens. All right, let's make it happen. Let's do it right now. Derrick Henry is signing with the Ravens at the start of free agency, and it's going to be amazing for this squad here. Now, what's so fun about what you just did, too, <clears throat> we have this vantage point of offseason. We get a little window of free agency where this big board, if it's a big board or it's an open tournament, Derrick Henry, let's say he signs. That would be the point, actually, within this tournament, the big board tournament, where I would be more prone to fade him because his ADP will skyrocket or go up. It'll go up enough with the signal from the Ravens between then and the NFL draft. Depending on when this tournament closes, there's going to be time where there'd be a Derrick Henry spike if he's fallen a little bit now and you get him prior to signing, and if we're bullish and it works out for this team, you're getting him at one of the best values that you can get the whole entire offseason. At that point, in the big board tournament, I'd be out of there, and I'd wait until the next tournament window opens up, so that way you're getting ADP versus a field even or better. But post a signing for Derrick Henry – if you're entering big board drafts, I would say goodbye to Derrick Henry because they're competing against people like you right now who are getting him at this price. True that. Love to see it. Now, earlier, we had talked a little bit. I made mention of Justin Jefferson in that one draft. I got him four. He falls past 102. 
I'm just like Pac-Man, just scoop, scoop, scoop. How are you handling Vikings players with Kirk Cousins with his free agency? Justin Jefferson with his contract? People can write it off, but it's at least, it's a wrinkle that's out there until it's resolved. It's not settled. TJ Hawkinson's injury. Jordan Addison, his ADP is at 53.6. Is that a value or a trap? Can you give me your thoughts on how you're handling the Minnesota Vikings? Yeah, I think you've 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 definitely hit it on the head there with just scooping up Jefferson. Maybe not at 102. I I I I sort of like Tyreek Hill it's around that. I, I think Tyreek Hill is probably there, but just to get exposure, sure, I I could do it there. He's just somebody that you're getting just based on where you get your initial draft slot, right? For sure. I, I, I'll scoop him up there. Really with Kirk potentially leaving, I've just very I've taken this very like Kirk agnostic approach to the Vikings. I don't I don't really factor it into my analysis at all because they're gonna find somebody. There is plenty of they had Dobbs and Nick Mullins do things with this offense that you still had Addison producing. You had Jefferson producing when he got back and was healthy. So I'm not really worried about Kirk leaving because I think they'll find all replacements somewhere. You've got Flacco as a free agent. You got Browning from Cincinnati who played well. Maybe he would do even better in that type of situation. So they'll find somebody. Hawkinson's ADP, I don't understand at all. And I know we talked about this. Is he still going off the board as like tight end? Yeah, tight end 12, right? Is that right? Tight end 12 on underdog. What What are your thoughts on that, Jeremiah? We, we have so many opportunities to flip both sides. And I've been firm, adamant, hey, he, he's overvalued. He's going too high. He and Nick Chubb were two guys earlier, earlier in this little wave. Because I think these... Contest dropped just between the Super Bowl, the conference championship games, right around there. And I've been out on TJ Hawkinson with the thought of Jordan Addison is going to be a good value right now. Where he is, 53.6. I could see he could fall a little bit. Right now, I feel like we're getting a good price. I I actually don't think he's going to fall too much. But I think he could get some good news from TJ Hawkins, or sorry, yes, TJ Hawkinson. If he is going to come in later, the injury reports come out, it's going to be a little bit longer. I like boosting up Jordan Addison. So if you pay Addison's ADP right now, I think you're going to get a value forward because his ADP would go up. But I've seen some Minnesota Vikings contacts. They're like crack rock. There's these two accounts that I follow. And they seem to just question the narrative that TJ Hawkinson is behind on his injury recovery. To respect and honor that, I might have to just sit there and say to myself, wait a second, maybe if bullish news comes out for TJ Hawkinson, I need to make sure I'm starting to activate and get some shares of TJ Hawkinson. So that's where I try and be like water. I try and change. And where I've been out on him, I think in the next wave and band, when the next tournament comes up and I rattle off 20 drafts, I think I'm going to be looking. I'm not going to overexpose. but I'm looking to get a little exposure to TJ Hawkinson just in the event that if we we get a clear bill bill of health or it's like, hey, he's only going to miss three, four weeks early on in the year and you're getting the whole season and that there's bullish reports, I think then you would get that spike that, that would hit up. Um, I'm scooping Jay Jets where he falls beyond 102. Not every time, but if it's there, I'm taking it because what I'll change besides the injury for him. Um, again, I said I love the ADP for Addison. I don't see too many dips for him, but we could see those those spikes with confirmation with TJ Hawkinson's timeline. And then, of course, Justin Jefferson leaves. Then we're really looking at that boost. I would, in Dynasty, try and sell Jordan Addison, but the market would react and boost him up. I have a question for you, though. I see Zay Flowers and Jordan Addison right around the same spot. I'm having a difficult time pressing the button on Zay Flowers when I'm in that area of the draft. 
which direction do you go? Say Flowers or Jordan Addison? Oh, man. It's tough. I think in a vacuum, you're going with Addison. I just think that there's a lot more upside there because I, I don't see Flowers as like the number one guy in Baltimore. I just don't see it. Now, will Addison ever be the number one guy? We just You, know, you just laid out a scenario where he, he might be, right? Um, you know, and also we saw Flowers as what, being a number one guy looked like when Andrews was was out, right? He was still losing targets to Nelson Aguilar, right? So <laughs> I think you have to go Addison there. The only way that I would probably go Flowers there if I had, because, you know, we talked about that prior build where, you know, you had Lamar, Andrews, and Flowers. Those guys are all going around the same spot. So... The only way that I would go flowers there is if I was trying to, if I maybe, you know, was looking to force a Ravens stack with flowers and Andrews and maybe took him earlier than he would otherwise go. Or if I already had Lamar there and I missed out on Andrews, I think those are really the only way. That's really the only way that I would go Zay flowers there over. It's, it's tricky because it's like a hot potato where you're trying to finagle Two of the three, uh, I see the same thing with the Lions where it's Amon Ra, Gibbs. You get one of them added on with Sam Laporta. You're getting two out of three of the big pieces. And then, like we talked about earlier, you can cap on with Jared Goff much later. So I see similarities there. But I've noticed I've been missing Anze Flowers. So I think the requisite share, percentage, exposure... I don't like that price for Zay, Pla Zay Flowers where he is, but I'm going to have to find a point where, like Matthew McConaughey, you got to up those numbers. Those are rookie numbers and find a way to put Zay Flowers in. And sometimes it may be at the behest of my selection for Jordan Addison. And that's how we end up with exposures, flatlined, even of all the players. Because sometimes if you're just one itis, or two widest, you miss out on a band of players that you could have had some exposure to. Um, I'm going to go over, I'm going to share another draft. This one's a little earlier. We're cooking uh, with a heavy wide receiver build. So what do we do? This team is less established than the first one that I had going. Mm. I've got Garrett Wilson, and that's a player who I've been making sure our next you know, topic that we do want to cover is who's a player you'd like to increase your exposure to. For me, it is Garrett Wilson, a 12.4 ADP. What I, f I fell into and, and, and found and saw, I'm just like, man, I'm, I'm not getting any or near any of what it feels like of Garrett Wilson. How am I missing out? And I'm sitting there thinking, okay, if you don't get him early on the wraparound, you're going to miss him because he's not there on the wraparound. He's right there at the one, two turn, just chop, chop. I get him, bang, bang. You have to clip him. And if it's that 11th or 12th pick, you got to get him quickly. And he's gone. And that's where he's been gobbled up. So I've noticed I've had to make a decision just to, sometimes I call it like you're just yanking the steering wheel to get right so you can get some exposure to somebody. I don't think I'm being too liberal in reaching above some other players, but some decision points, B. John Robinson, Puka Nakua, and Jameer Gibbs. I am telling myself a narrative when it's in that pocket of players that Garrett Wilson, like last year, you put Rodgers in, he could be a top five wide receiver. And I see him as a guy who could be in that early tier, that early band of wide receivers that we're talking about right now. So if I believe that that's where it'll become, I need to start drafting that way as well. Doesn't mean I go crazy, but I want to get those numbers up. So I got to ask you, do I go? Uh, I'm leaning for receivers here. I'm not scared. We're not. We don't play scared. We're fine with being fragile at running back. Go zero running back. We're not foolish. But I, I, I'm, I'm thinking Mike Evans here, Keenan Allen. What do you want to sell me on? What do you think's good here with Garrett Wilson, DJ Moore, and Stephon Diggs? Man, the board is just so wide open in this draft right now. I, I definitely echo what you're you're putting out there though i would not want to force a running back here you could i guess in theory 
go with a, 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 a non Allen Dill stack with <laughs> James Cook and Diggs. I don't know. I guess you could pull that off. I don't know why you would want to, um, you know, get those guys without Allen. Um, I so yeah, receiver is probably definitely where I would lean here. I think Evans. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Because you're what you're at pick. 40, that's right? That's another thing. I'm at 40, and he's yeah. at 2 ADP. Evan is, has dropped a little bit. Yeah, I think I think you're right with Evans, for sure. Lock and, it in. And, and baseline, well, we're going to lock it in, but baseline, you've got the 1,000-yard seasons that are being printed by Mike Evans. And and he's doing it in Tampa. Now we, we pair him in all those scenarios where it's, if it's Mahomes, if it's Josh Allen, if it's Joe Burrow, we'll see. If he gets richer at quarterback, essentially, moonshot, he's going up. Rocket ship. So let's go. Mike Evans, we aren't ages. You know, I'd love drafting rookie players, but let's lock it in, put it on the board. Mike Evans, we're here at night school. We are learning. All right, beautiful. We have Mike Evans. Now, I was talking to you about – my player I want to increase exposure to. Who's the player that you want to increase your exposure to? You know, it's funny because he's 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 on that board right now, and it looks like you, you took him at uh, pick 16, and that's DJ Moore. He He's, again, similar to what you said about Wilson. He's one of those guys where when you're getting towards the turn, you sort of have to, I don't want to say force it, but just just do it and just don't look back to get him. And I've had a hard time doing that because at the turn you could usually go AJ Brown's there. And for me, he's a much better at this point stacking option with Hertz. So you go elite QB and AJ Brown. I haven't been able to get Brown Hertz and Smith, although I've seen, I've seen that pulled off. So it's doable. And I want to keep doing that until I pull it off. And that's maybe why I don't have DJ Moore. But DJ Moore to me is is somebody that I definitely want to get some more exposure to, um, particularly because I, I I'm not really sure how the market is going to react if Fields gets traded. Right? If Caleb Williams is there, do we think his ADP goes up or down? Because I I think it goes up, but I don't necessarily think that his fantasy production goes up with it. What do you think, Jeremiah? I, I like what you're saying there. I think if you go Caleb Williams right now, because he's just super cheap, just beautiful price right now, chef's kiss, you get DJ Moore, 16.7 ADP, as you said. How far up is he going to go? We're bullish on DJ Moore. We see how Fields, as a passer, how is he in his layered throws, the intermediate stuff, anticipatory. Justin Fields gets by on certain skills and traits. He's got a nice arm, but we see so much more, right? That's in Caleb Williams. I think you're right. You might as well buy the price for DJ Moore now. And I think it's it's the opposite where Caleb Williams is going to go up boards once we have it locked in. He's going to go up a little bit higher. I think right now the value is there. It's tied to Caleb. So I, I would say to get max value from DJ Moore when you increase – you're going to take pressure off of that mentality of getting those Eagles players. So now where you were thinking, okay, Brown, Hertz, Smith, gobble, 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 you can now be like, hey, DJ Moore, where you were drafting Hertz, you get another positional player. And then you're later, you're just capping on with just the chef's kiss, capping your team, making it look beautiful, uh, putting Caleb on the board stacking with DJ Moore. I think that might be the move. Yeah, I think I think you might be right there. I think you might be right. So let's let's get to another draft here that I'm cooking. Um I'm currently at pick 137. Um I've got I I love how I started this draft off cuz I've got Bengals and Colts, right? I've got the the stacks right there. It would have been great if I was able to get Bowers where I took Montgomery, in my opinion, but mm -hmm. it didn't play out that way. So I pivoted to Montgomery. 
when Bowers got taken. I think mm-hmm. he got taken like a couple picks before that, and it just broke my heart. I've got a couple players queued up. For some reason, I have I've got I've got this giant stack. We could forget that because unless we reach for Waller, which I don't know why we would do that here. Although I guess uh, no, he'll come back at because I go I get to pick where am I at? Yeah, pick one fifty. Mm-hmm. He may he I think he'll he'll likely be there. Who knows? But if he's not there, I'm not gonna be too heartbroken over it. I've got a pretty fragile running back room. Although I Barkley and Montgomery as the two RBs, I, I'm happy with for sure. Last pick I went with Roshan to add to that running back room. Where we've got, I mean, we've got a lot of running backs right here that I think are maybe not, maybe not Cleo Herbert, but everybody else <laughs> is pretty sexy. I feel. What do you think, Jeremiah? Where, where, where do we, where do we go from here? So I love. What you have cooking here, the cool thing, you have a rich Burrow, you have the Colts, you have the Bengals, two teams that are tracking to draft a tight end. Now, you talked about, hey, I lost out on Bowers, a few picks off. If you do the same simulation instead of David Montgomery, there's going to be drafts where you can click Brock Bowers. I like the idea. Let's queue up. If you click tight end, can you click Jatavian Sanders? I can. He's all the way down here. 173. Beautiful. So we're not going to chase him. him. Where's your pick right now? One. Are we in the 150s? I am pick one. No, I'm at 139. Pick 139. Great. Great. Now, there's probably going to be somebody like me who might reach for him. But I like the way this can go. You can go and chase running back with your mindset of when you come back around, you might be able to clip and and get JT Sanders onto your team where you have flexibility of upside of that gift that unwraps on draft day of either the Colts getting JT Sanders or Joe Burrow getting JT Sanders. The beauty is the Colts have an earlier pick, so we we line that up a little bit with Bowers for, for team and team need. Granted, trades can happen all the time. The Bengals are a little bit further back in the draft. So if they want to chase that second tight end, J.T. Sanders might be there available for him. So where you miss the boat on Brock Bowers, we may end up coming back to this at some point and benefiting from J.T. Sanders. It's too early to get him. We won't chase. If you love something, you let it go. So we're going to let him go. We'll put him in the queue of those running backs. Who do you like the most, Blake Corum, Kendra, Bucky Irving? I sort of like Miller and Irving, but I don't really have any Blake Corum on any of my rosters. So I'm leaning towards taking him here just for the sake of getting some exposure. May hate, That may backfire because I, I do think I like Miller a lot yeah, and Irving a lot more. But but le- I think I think for the sake of... Just getting some exposure because I don't think I really have any at this point. I think I'm going to click on Blake Corum. I like that. I like where your head's at. And really, you have the opportunity to, if we flatten our exposure to these rookie running backs, because we can think all we want about what we know. We don't. We don't know near as much as we think we know. And what will happen is there'll be cards. Things will be. We talked about Jalen Wright earlier. We're bullish. We're. We think it's going to happen. But until it happens, it hasn't happened. Last year, we were loving Izzy Abanacanda's profile. And he gets buried on the Jets. So there are going to be some players that we get duped by. The NFL is going to change on us. But I think it's wise to get a flattened exposure where you're getting some of all so that you have requisite shares of these players. Because come draft day, they may go down dip-wise but they may go up. And I like right now this window for some of these rookie running backs to rise. So I would go with Blake Corum. Plus it, it, it accomplishes you're getting some exposure on top of what we're talking about. He's going to get an excellent bowling ball role, possibly with the chargers. He's getting hyped up all day to go back with Harbaugh or maybe even the Ravens snipe him up. That would mess with your Ravens stack 
<laughs> but this, when you do this, now you've got two things kindling. Yeah, you've got the Ravens opportunity, or maybe the Chargers getting him, Blake Corm, as your fourth running back after Roshan Johnson. I like it. Let's let's do it. Let's do it. Lock it in. Jeremiah, you talked about flattening your exposure and how it's probably best to flatten exposure with a lot of these rookie running backs. Who is a player that you feel like you've got to flatten your exposure with in the you've I don't, I don't know how many drafts you've got under your belt. You're a freaking madman with the drafts. You've probably got, you know, 10, 20, no, <laughs> how many? <laughs> But no, you've got you've got a lot of drafts that you've you've worked on so far. Who do you think you need to flatten your exposure to at this point? And what other pivot points are you looking at on the board to accomplish that goal? Yep, the guy that I hey, I'm a sinner here, JT Sanders. I talked about him. I, I you hear me on on Twitter going off about him in, in positive ways. But right now I've $85 of entry fees. 73% drafted. I remember Dalton Kincaid last year by Chess Liam. He had some huge exposure. So I feel less bad. But I also understand. I have 30 drafts in my belt. I think I've got another five out there. So we might be cooking with between completed. I've got about 20. And then I've got another 10 to 15 that are outstanding. It's JT Sanders. I've got some. Just It's a huge percentage. It's, it doesn't scare me because it's such a low amount of drafts. What I'm going to end up doing, I have about a $1,500 budget by five. I'm not a math teacher, but and this is night school. That would be 300 drafts. So if we're at a price point of $5, these early ones are $10 price points. We had the little board at $3. Between the $10 and $3, I'm really $5. Give me $5. And get me the volume on the drafts. So we're going to end up having a lot more drafts prior to the NFL draft proper. And then, of course, between the draft and the regular season, there'll be a bulk because there's just more calendar time there, right? But JT Sanders, it's it's got to flatten. It's got to go lower. I want to gain more exposure on Roman Wilson. Roman Wilson, the darling of, of the senior bowl, he's going 172.1 ADP. Just a few spots ahead of JT Sanders. I feel great putting him on my team when I do click Roman Wilson. And I am getting requisite exposure. <clears throat> Jalen Polk is another guy. 167.4 ADP. You know, uh, Roma Dunze is getting all the hype. Jalen Polk, watch him just be some competent, good wide receiver. That, again, landing spot. We talk about that all the time. Trey Benson. Oh, wait, sorry. Marshawn Lloyd at 170.5. He's a, a rookie running back. He's got some of that high upside. We like, again, the exposure to all the rookie running backs. You're not going to be bullish too much. You want to keep them all on an even plane. And then we get some signal. Then we'll start changing maybe some of who we're bullish on more. He's another player. And then Ray Davis, 185.5 ADP. Just a good pass catching running back. He's going to be cheaper. When I go after those running backs, I'm going to band it so that I don't have too many running backs earlier in my draft and I have a, a different way of building my team. So part of that is going to veering away from J JT Sanders is the fact that I'm going to change some of my builds and who was there earlier. So in favor of JT Sanders, it's that six wide receiver that I'm getting in Polk and Roman Wilson. And then it's that second or third running back because I've gone hero or zero running back with Lloyd and Ray Davis. Now we have, we'll go over another draft. Let me pull it up. So here we're cooking with, I think this is another big board. Devon Achan, love Achan. Paid off big time last year. Didn't quite stay healthy how we may have wanted, but we love drafting him. Now you got to pay the price. You got to ride the ride. You got to pay the ticket. You're not getting him in the double digit rounds. 
And where people are going to say, I'm out because we're, we're cooking at his ceiling price. If I'm going to do 250 or 300 drafts, I have to have a way to get some. To, what if he is Jamal Charles? Or what if he fades some <clears throat> and has some injuries? We just don't know. There is fragility at the running back position. We respect that. We're aware of it. My three receivers here, Garrett Wilson. Hey, there he is. Trying to up those numbers, baby. Jalen Waddle and Drake London. I'm huge on Drake London. My exposure to uh, Jalen Waddle has been very minimal in these drafts. But when I went with A-Chan and the opportunity presented itself, I was like, okay, you know what? Got to get some numbers. We're going to get Jalen Waddle. So this is setting up for hey, that opportunity to get to a later, but we're not pressed. We're definitely not pressed. Aaron Rodgers is out there to pair with Garrett Wilson. And then Drake London, it could be Justin Fields. I, I like Justin Fields to go there. He's been the betting favorite. There's a swath of, of opportunities there. So we don't have to name every single player that's on that. All right. Taking a look here, we talked about Roma Dunze. Talked about Jordan Addison. Do we think with the hero running back build of Devon A. Chan, should I veer towards Alvin Kamara, who was like a CMC light, just got a lot of pass game usage? Or, or do we want to go keep heavy with the anchor running back build and go and get a wide receiver? Mm. Man, pivoting to running back is tempting here, especially since I feel like there's a good chance that when you pick again, that Walker, Kamara, and Henry are not there. Because when's, when's your next pick in this this draft here, Jeremiah? Let's see. I'm 56. Oh, yeah. They'll be long gone. Okay. <laughs> I It looked like there was a turn there. So I was like, oh, maybe. Oh, no, there you are. Wait a minute. There you are. Right there. There you go. Middle screen. So 65. They might be there. Oh, okay. We're, we're, we're a handful of picks away. Yeah. Um, so they might... They might be there. They might be there. So I take that back. So I would I would risk it because you've got a couple outs there, right? You've got mm -hmm. Kamara and Henry. And even if like you you whiff on both those guys, you could probably go Aaron Jones and that gives you the same similar profile. Although I think I would prefer Kamara and Henry over Jones at this point. How about this? I've got a pick. I've got three picks between and then I've got another. I just queued up Camara, who we prefer. Yeah. We did the bullish statement on Derrick Henry. We're at least bullish, it sounds like, even though he's at the highest ADP on Ken Walker. I think we go wide receiver here and then take our bets that three running backs won't run. You have a fourth. If we really wanted to force in a running back, there's Aaron Jones as our fourth. So with three picks outstanding. Yeah, four players queued up. It's just another little move that you can do. Have more players queued up. Have 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 moves for moves. Have players for players. So that if all three got sniped, you don't feel like you're suffering one-itis for a player. Oh, no, they took it. We've got a fourth player, and we're ready. We're right on time. I think what we do is we're going to figure out what our wide receiver is that we're going to take here. And then we'll we'll, we'll play this little risk game. And hope one of the three come back. Now, if Kamara and Henry go, I may reevaluate the Ken Walker. But right now, we're putting Ken Walker three. And until we click, until we decide, we'll see how we feel. So now, I want to pivot to you. We like Jordan Addison at his ADP. How do you feel about Roma Dunze here? Man, I Roma Dunze is a tough click for me. I have I've done it a couple times because I just you just need to get that exposure, and who <clears> knows <throat> he could get a great landing spot. But and I I just feel like there's a lot of hype on Rome where people are pushing him into that that tier, the tier of the neighbors and the Harrison. He's not going anywhere near them in underdog, but it's hard for me to click on him. Although some people are really bullish on him, maybe you're one of those people. Jeremiah, I don't know, but he would make sense in this build, I think, because you have Wilson, Waddle, London. Those are all guys that are going to get theirs. So he could make sense. There as like an upshot play for sure. 
and you're we're in a tournament here, so you got to shoot for you got to shoot the shot here. Now, am I being disrespectful to Jackson Smith and Jake Buck? You might be. I will say too. I know you don't have Metcalf here, but I feel like Geno Smith is another one of those cherry on top guys yeah. that you could do very easily with getting Smith and Smith and Jigba and Lockett and just adding Geno Smith when he falls to pick 200 in drafts. <laughs> it just is going to happen because people have their quarterbacks. They look at them and they say, oh, I don't need Geno Smith. And you just go, thank you. <sighs> yeah. I mean, do we go? Play- What's up? Do we go JSN? JSN could work too. Either all these guys, I think are, I think between for me, it's a decision with this build. It's a decision between, Addison, Adunze, and JSN. And maybe Pickens if you really want to throw him in there. But uh, guys that have growth potential, right? McLaurin's going to get his. Kirk is going to get his. I feel like you have to get, you have to pick between those four guys as to who you think is going to make that next jump. Because I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, okay, Addison, it's murky. But we, we've talked about the earlier topics of JJets. And TJ Hawkinson, but do we really think that Addison is anything more than a high grade two? Sometimes maybe a one B on a given week. Terry, if he gets the quarterback, where it's it's wheels up. JSN, he has to muddy through the traffic of DK and Tyler. Maybe another year of growth there. Roma Dunze might actually get drafted as a wide receiver one on this team. But it's I like, hard, man. I, I, but you know what? I, I, I like what you say about JSN. And I like what you say about the cherry on top. We're going to have outs for outs. We're setting this up. We've got Waddle. Tua will be there later. Garrett Wilson, no one's running up to, to get Aaron Rodgers. Drake London, we could go a variety of ways and, you know, playing roulette, red or black. Is it going to be Fields? Is it going to be. Cousins later, is it one of these rookie running or rookie quarterbacks? Sorry. And then JSN, you have just that that cherry on top, like you said. No one's going to be rushing or competing too hard for Geno Smith. You know what I'm going to do? We're going to go hero running back with A Chan. If A Chan's going to pay off, he's going to have to be a hero. So let's put it on the board for JSN. Love it. Love it. And then the next next topic. I think might be our last. It's been a pleasure and a joy, everybody. Your favorite late round player, round 18 to 20. Who are you looking at? Who are you trying to go after? Usually around that area, if I'm desperate for a tight end, I, I go to no fan. If I've got that, I've got one tight end already, or I've got a Bowers and like a floor guy, I'm probably going no fan around that. I think Fant, he had a really unlucky start to his career. He got paired up with Drew Locke as part of the Broncos. He was taken in the first round there. They obviously liked him enough to take him in the first round. He just didn't get the type of targets that you would expect a guy like him to get. He's an uber athlete. He goes to Seattle where Pete Carroll is just going to chew gum and establish the run. That's all he's going to do. So <laughs> and you get rained on. It rains. Yeah, on. yeah. <laughs> that too. And that is not really the best place for a guy like Fant, who is really a pass catching running back, pass catching tight end, I should say, to thrive. He's a free agent now. I'll bake. Uh, I'll, I'll. 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 I'll take some hopium and hope that he lands somewhere great. And I will. I will pick Noah Fant in the late rounds. He's a good guy that I'm looking to target whenever I'm looking for a tight end around that area. I love that. He's he's really a bailout guy. At Another tight end who I, it's not, it just isn't sexy, but it's Dawson Knox. Cause I think, all right, he could buoy some touchdown production, the 448 in a touchdown. All of a sudden you're, you're cooking with these random, not a crazy spike week, but a, a tight end one week. Uh, Noah Fant offers that. And what's cool too is, is that we can unwrap a present around free agency where he lands could really put him in a great spot, and we still love him as a prospect. I love that call on Noah Fant. For me, late at 237 ADP, he might not even get drafted sometimes. And these are 20-round drafts, so this is going to change Come when there's 18 rounds. We have real decisions to make there. But I really do like Michael Carter right now. 
I have more faith in the Cardinals to take advantage of the Jets' mistake. Uh, recall the Jets chose a cooked Dalvin Cook over Michael Carter. He has pass game chops. The Cardinals have more problems than running back. So I think they're going to ride. They will. They, they've already shown. They will ride James Conner. Michael Carter, to me, is a very good flex cuff with contingent upside. Now, what we'll have to do is watch the draft, rounds four through seven, maybe even some UDFAs, but really four through seven, if a running back does go, that does muddy up the water some. But I really think the way that the Cardinals will build, they're, they're going to go in other directions to where economically they'll think, well, we'll ride out James Conner and with the fragility of the running back position, would it surprise anybody if Michael Carter just puts up these respectable weeks and pays off his best ball round 20 ADP? Not hard to do. Not hard to do in round 20. And I love that call. I loved Michael Carter coming out as a prospect. The Jets totally did not use him correctly. I, he's he's definitely that, that change pace, scat pack type of guy. And I think they did earlier in the year. Or at least Hall's rookie season, I think they used him the right way. But, but, but yeah, I, I love that call, especially considering James Conner's health history. For and sure. the beauty is right now, like we talked, I've I'm, got about 30 drafts in. I'll have a certain amount more up until the NFL draft. The Cardinals draft a running back. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to – Michael Carter might be somebody that I flatten my exposure to. But I'm going to have a, re, a requisite amount. And it could, from there, pop and be good. Or I'll get a signal, and it's like, hey, my cue to leave. You got to humbly know when to fold them, know when to hold them. So do you want to do one more pick? Yeah, let's do one more pick, and then we'll call it. So I've got this draft queued up here. I'm picking it, again, pick 69. Okay? Nice. Uh, lovely pick. It's my number for, for tonight, uh, apparently. Alvin Kamara just went. We're working on this build currently with a Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey stack. We have Tyreek Hill, a Again, we, I, this draft, I did take a over Debo and a little hero, Travis ETN build. I don't know about you, but like ETN is for me, like the last back that I'm confident in building that type of hero build with. Maybe I'm wrong, but he's going at the top of round three right now. He's like the the last guy that I would consider going a hero RB build with. We've got, we, we're in what I think is really the ugliest part of these underdog drafts, like by far, because it is literally just running backs and quarterbacks. I think where the value is at, we can go on wide receiver here. I've got Christian Watson at the top of my board. His ADP is rising a bit, but it's still a bit early for him. Although, although I have taken him in places like this where you know, I've gone the, the rare instances and in where I've gone RB heavy, you have to go Watson here. Didn't do it here. I feel like just based on value, I'm leaning with these running backs here. We again have Derek Henry falling about uh, if I could count, right? I don't know what eight picks below ADP mm -hmm. at present eight, maybe seven. I don't know. I don't do math, but that's the best I've got. Jeremiah, where where would you go from here? What interests you on this board right now? How many picks do you have until your next pick? So I'm picking at the 609. So I come back up again, pick 76. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm. Not including this pick here. So eight picks total, including my pick until I'm back on the board again. So two things. We have a lot of duality, right? I like catching what I don't think is a falling knife at all in Derrick Henry. I think you're going to be beautiful, come out on roses, getting him at a dip. I love Tajay Spears here. I think he's that, that aggressive move to make as the second running back. You say, what, over Derrick Henry? I think he could have that Rashad White ascendance, but you're, you're paying for him much later. But the problem is wide receiver gets so gross at this point. And you only have two wide receivers right now. So how do you feel about going wide receiver? You want to go Brian Thomas Jr. And hope he has some of that T. Higgins profile 
and he pops as a rookie, gets a good landing spot, or you want to just keep it even and, and go with somebody like Tajay Spears or a Derrick Henry. I Tajay Spears interests me a lot more than Henry. Now that you pointed out, I I do think that I could get some wide receiver exposure later here. Um, you know, with Mahomes and Kelsey, I feel like when you pick those guys where you pick them, you're saying, okay, I'm I'm doing a two quarterback, two tight end build here, right? So I'm gonna have a lot of picks here to fill in those wide receiver holes. And I like doing that. I think that that it's a lot easier to do that towards the end of the draft than maybe grabbing a running back that might not do anything, right? right. So I'm I'm okay with waiting on receiver here. I think you made a good case. And particularly, I, I think I could get a receiver at the next time I pick as well. I think I'll be able to get either Watson or Thomas. Um, and I also love, can you click and cue on Jacoby Myers? Oh, dude, for sure, man. For sure. You're, I'm drafting him as my wide receiver three, and that is his floor. That's that I'm drafting him at his, his floor. And really, yeah. what you're looking at with this team build, if you end up with Tajay Spears, you think Etienne can be a top five running back. We are bullish on Tajay Spears. We're bullish. We believe in Tyree Kill to be the top, one of the top. He, he could be worth the one-on-one with his output in the band that he's he's going ADP-wise. Brandon Ayuk, we're as bullish as can be. Patrick Mahomes, we see him as a top five quarterback. And he and Kelsey. Kelsey can really be still the tight end one one. We're, we're believing in everything where we're going. We will chase wide receiver, I think, with this draft after you go re- running back here. It, that's what you said, right? Is that correct? I don't want to. Yeah, no, I think that that's. Me. Yeah, I'm making the pick, Jeremiah here. What, what do you want to do after all that? What, what do we want to do? I think you made a great case for Spears. I'm going to take him right here. And what's good about that, too? We, we've that. had different iterations since you had some volume drafting. We had a draft earlier where we're, we're all buying Derrick Henry. Had you not had that draft, for this, so this is for the people at home for night school, if you don't have that opportunity where you're, you're having a couple opportunities volume-wise, you're feeling like, oh, no, I want to get Derrick Henry, and you might not open your, your mind to, all right, now we're going to choose Tajay Spears over Derrick Henry. It might sound crazy. But when you play volume, not so much. For sure. For sure. All right. So I think we, we had a great first episode. We'll be happy to see you all next week. All right. This has been Night School. We're going to enjoy the rest of our week. Hit us up on Twitter. We're happy to see you. But until then, we'll see you next time. Have a Bye-bye. great night.